um, chapter 10 end and blood on the river? And what caused his death? Right. And who do you think is going to feel responsible? Sam. Why? What made him do that? He, he let him go, right? And did he end up saying goodnight to him or did he fall asleep so quickly? He fell asleep. He fell asleep, right. Okay, chapter 11, we're on page 81. Hereupon the president was contented the fort should be palisadoed. The ordinance mounted, his men armed and exercised. So that's saying they're going to build a palisade. A palisade. What is that? A fence. Right. To help what? To, to protect or guard something. Right. Reverend Hunt kneels with me in the dirt in front of the altar. He puts words to prayers I cannot speak. Please take James' soul into heaven with you because he was just an innocent child. And then he lays a hand on my shoulder. Samuel, you've been here a long time. Have you finished your prayers yet? I shake my head. How can I finish praying for forgiveness? It was my fault, I say. My throat feels dry as sand. I should have explained to him the danger of running to the ships. I should have been kinder to him so that he would trust me. I should have been able to grab him and pull him back into the tent. I should not have let him go when he bit me. I had so many chances to keep Jane safe, and I failed at all of them. Reverend Hunt stands and reaches down a hand to pull me up. I take his hand reluctantly and rise. He looks into my eyes. When our Lord spoke of forgiveness, he did not only mean forgiving others. Sometimes we have to forgive ourselves. I swallow past a lump in my throat. Now, go wash your face and see if there's any breakfast left. You won't be able to work if you don't eat. Reverend Hunt gives me a little push and I leave the chapel. I trudge through the work of the day, sewing up holes in tents and mattresses, bringing water and food to our makeshift hospital where Dr. Woden tends to the wounded men, dumping more water upon our wilted plants. Richard's eyes are red and swollen, which means he's been doing what? Crying. Right when your eyes are red and swollen, it could mean allergies. But knowing the events that have occurred thus far, it leads us to infer that he has been what? Crying. Crying. I don't know what to say to him to make it any better. I don't think he wants to hear from me anyway. I wonder if Richard will ever forgive me for my meanness to James while he was alive and my failure to save him. That afternoon, Captain Smith, Captain Newport, and the party return. They say their Indian guide had acted strangely. He left them suddenly with no explanation. This made them suspicious that a raid was being planned, and so they sailed back to us as quickly as they could. They are dismayed to find out that they were right. In the evening, the council calls a meeting to discuss our situation. I creep near the cabin where the council members are talking so that I can eavesdrop. These are not just disorganized people living in towns here and there, Captain Newport says. They are tribes within an empire. Their emperor is called a partner, and the people are the partners. And the river we named the James River, they already call the Parton River. They are a kingdom of warriors. The boys are taught to use bow and arrow when they are six years old. Their mothers don't even give them breakfast until they have shot the targets in the morning. When the great chief Parton wants to conquer a new tribe, the warriors get the job done very quickly. There's a prophecy they told us about, says Master Percy. Do you need me? Okay. That's okay. Okay, sure. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I thought you just need to get something. Um, there's a prophecy they told us about, says Master Percy. The bay we first entered on our way here, they call the Chesapeake Bay. There used to be a tribe, the Chesapeake's living on shore. 
The prophecy says that a threat to Chief Parton's empire will come from the Chesapeake Bay. When he heard this, he sent his warriors, and one day they wiped out the Chesapeake tribe. Uh, there must have been 400 of them last night, says Captain Gosnold. If it had not been for the cannon scaring them off, they would have easily killed us all. There is silence then. What do you think they're all thinking? James saved, um, James saved them. What? What? No, what was dead. Captain Smith saying? Yeah, James shot the cannon. Right. What was Captain Smith saying, though, they were gonna find in chapter yeah, 9? They need to and they all thought, no, they're the trading path. with us. It's all cool. It's we good. We're, we're buds. There's no worries. And Captain Smith was like, nope, I feel something's happening. His instinct the told him. Yeah. The book that they always looked at, like, yeah. They were looking like you were counting them in. Great, Presley, great detail. But they scoff at Captain John Smith. They want him to be wrong so badly, and they don't give him any credit for his thoughts. But here, once again, he's what? Right. 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 Um, there is silence then. I'm on the bottom page, 83. No one wants to tell President Wingfield that he was wrong and that Captain Smith was right about building a palisade, I think. President Wingfield, to his credit, had been at the forefront of the battle. Those who saw him said that he had fired his musket even as an arrow went right through his beard. I hold my breath. Please, someone tell him we need to build a strong fort. All right, President Wingfield's voice breaks the silence. There will be watches, armed men at every corner and shifts throughout the day and night. And, he hesitates a moment, Tomorrow we will begin the construction of a tall palisade with not so much as a crack between the posts. I lay on my breath, and I creep away before anyone catches me listening. Fear makes us work fast. We fell trees and make them into palisade posts with wickedly sharp tips. We dig a trench in a large triangle around our tents and plant our posts so close together an arrow cannot get through. Each corner of the triangle is rounded like a half moon with each pla with a platform inside. We bring cannons from the ships and mount them on the platforms. We are making a fort like soldiers at war. Okay, boys and girls, on your dry erase. You're a hawk flying over the settlement. I would like you to draw a bird's eye view of what that paragraph just described. What shape is the palisade? What's on each vertex? Do you remember what a vertex is? Did you learn the that in corners. geometry? Good, the corners where the ends meet. What's on each vertex? And how strongly are the uh, posts built? You have two minutes. Draw a bird's eye view of the middle chapter, I'm sorry, the middle paragraph in chapter 11 on page 84.